So team, Apache Spark expected interview questions for data engineers. Okay. One thing I just want to ask our, our friends that team, what do you think? Like we were able to complete almost 12 sessions and we covered a lot many topics, very vast, I can say, which is enough, maximum enough uh, attending an interview or working in real time also. Okay. Even some of data engineers don't know all this process, though they have a three years experience place. But if you are able to complete this by your own, then you can climb, I told you, right? Two to three years experience guy only for this course. Uh, don't read only question and answers only for the sake of clearing the interviews. That is very, very wrong. Uh, uh, I think, Naresh, we covered almost all the important uh, concepts, whatever we have yes. for interview purpose. Yes. I just picked up only uh, questions which, which I remember out of our explanation. But there could be many other based on the concepts or the uh, scenarios that we, uh, you know, explain. Okay, but let's go. Spark context versus Spark session. Did we cover? Yes. Yes. All right. Difference between RDD data frame and data set. Did we cover? Yes. What is unheap memory? Are you aware? Yes, Naresh, in the first session we have covered. Very good. What is off heap memory? What is garbage collector? Explain Spark internal architecture. Difference between Spark cluster mode and client mode. This is very, very important. Architecture and cluster mode and client mode is very important. How Spark do a memory management, especially executor memory deep dive. We discussed. What is driver out of memory exception on how to fix it? We discussed. What is executor out of memory exception and how to fix it? We discussed. What are transformations and actions? Yes. Difference between narrow and wide transformations. We covered. What is fault tolerance in Spark? We covered. What is lazy evolution in Spark? We covered. Okay. The 14 questions from this slide. Any, any doubt? If you are able to go through our material or our videos, I hope you will able to answer this question. Correct or wrong? Yes. Great. Now, this is the second set of questions. Can one Spark application have multiple Spark sessions? Yes. Anyone answer? Can one Spark yes. application have yes. multiple? Yes. 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 What is a direct asectic crap? DAG. We covered a DAG, right? What is Spark application? What is job? What is stages and task? We covered it. How to calculate number of CPU cores required to process a particular amount of data and how to calculate number of executors required. CPU cores required is different. Executors is different. And how much memory executor memory is different and total ex memory is different. So all these four we covered in one slide, all right? Very, very important. How to set up spark configuration for clusters. Yes, we already discussed how to set up a spark configuration for a cluster we created secret scope and then we set up we cleared uh, we we done a setup for uh, you know uh, a new cluster right so that it connect to databricks notebooks right we no need to create all these connections every on each and every nodes we no need to mount okay and manage the tables versus external tables we covered temporary view what is temporary view what is global view in spark what is metalized view? Recently we covered. What is metalized view? Types of slowly changing dimensions. Total six types we covered. Six or five. Okay, we covered. In that, one or two very, very important. That also we covered. How to create a data frame by reading different file formats. CSV, JSON, Parquet. We covered this. How to create a data frame out of a high table or any table. It's very simple. We covered that. So this is a second set of interview questions, which we can able to answer from our entire tutorial. Okay. So, so far I just listed 28 now. Third set. How to write a data frame? We saw that practically. 
explain the concept okay lazy evolution i think we already covered right okay sorry so uh, the concept of lazy evolution in spark and its significance we we learned this is the question is repeated what is predicate push down we learned what is predicate push down we learned what is sort merge join we saw the practical when we are uh, you know doing the broadcast join as part of our performance optimization right what is partitioning and bucketing very very important concept again cache and versus persist not only you know practicals this and all we saw practicals right guys okay what are storage levels of persist we discussed right storage levels storage levels can anyone please tell me for some of storage levels in memory in memory. yes memory and disk serialization memory and disk and then only uh, memory only disk so you no know, there are some uh, storage levels storage level will be used only when use persist method not a cache repartition and queries we discussed how to create a new column can anyone please answer how to create a new column what function or what uh, what method you will use with column with column very good how to remove duplicates team how to remove duplicates in spark what drop. command we use drop duplicates very good simple how to fill in null values fill in me that's it and don't think this silly no it's not a silly it's a important questions okay have you select a specific columns from a, a data frame are you aware dot select yes select or, or yes 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 for sometimes we have to import call function also a call method um, how do you rename with column rename with column rename correct right. with column rename and you hope you are aware of syntax of group by how you will do dsl the domain specific language okay you have to aware both sql and dsl so dsl is like a uh, other way okay we can write a query other way right how can you join two data frames can anyone just give me a pseudo code syntax for that joining two data frames df1 dot join into bracket df2 and then yes. on which column. column yes correct this is also important definitely you may get a questions and explain stack type and stack field can anyone please tell me when we use stack type and stack field why is, is this is necessary when we have to define a schema user define schema external schema yes yes so when we want to create a schema manual schema especially uh, we will use these uh, in functions okay so incremental load by using watermark watermark column so that is outdated or currently we are using but in the future may not use because of this uh, auto loader and uh, dlt concepts but still we should aware uh incremental load by using a watermark column methodology okay no one question auto loader is used for only uh, live and delta live table good question you have to tell me i think yes but uh, <laughs> uh, i little bit confused uh, if normal uh, anyone uh, anyone can you please answer this it is only used for uh, dlt right are you sure No, Anyone? because this session happened before we move into DLT. So DLT has some different uh, uh, what do you call it? syntax. Mm. So I think uh, uh, we can use uh, auto loader uh, without DLT also. Auto loader uh, or landing to or uh, till one layer, right? Let us say branch. Okay, till that we will use auto loader. You are getting me. that portion that portion only we are using auto loader correct okay okay, okay. Mm. not entire uh, in auto loader we uh, uh, use read stream right a read stream yeah so it doesn't have to be stream process right batch process will also uh, can be there uh, like That's yesterday what... we did yeah yes yesterday we did and we even we schedule it right we can able to yeah, schedule yeah. it this that run combination of uh, even auto loader with dlt we can schedule it that we can use it as a batch also correct yeah yeah correct for incremental load we use uh, merge in uh, databricks i think you tell me what we used uh, 
मार्च अप्लाई चेंजेस टू देर इज अन्बिल्ट वी टोल्ड यू ना अप्लाई चेंजेस टू इन इनबिल्ट एपीआई इज देयर करेक्ट सीडीसी हां यस सीडीसी अप्लाई चेंजेस टू इज एपीआई यू रिमेंबर ओके ओके या या एंड और दिस एंड ऑल रिलेटेड टू मैक्सिमम स्पार्क कैन यू डिस्कस अ रोल ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर स्ट्रीमिंग इन स्पार्क we already discussed right before discussing before explaining the auto loader we already had a detailed session on this spark success streaming with manual manual schema evolution and automatic schema evolution can anyone please tell me what are the drawbacks uh, this uh, structure streaming evolution versus auto loader major drawbacks schema evolution yeah so it, it does not give a rescued column Yeah, uh, you are correct. Already. And one more thing, yeah, data type. If we yes, data type hint. Uh, it can evaluate man uh, automatic also. Schema evaluation is not a matter, but the two are we discussed more. One is schema hint, another one is rescue data. Okay, yeah, you are correct. Now, this is the last slide. Data mix. What is data mix Unity catalog? We discussed. What is the difference between? uh with and without unity catalog that means in place of high meta store i mean high meta store versus uh, unity catalog is indirectly <coughs> we are saying what is role level security what is column level security in data bricks what is role based access control are back that means you know if we have some we have some groups okay we will assign some roles to that groups based on that roles they will get a access that's it we also discussed uh, why uh unity catalog is better than high meta store uh, because in that case you just explain the uh, the features of unity catalog is is sufficient especially you have to highlight a lineage and then um, centralized access so and uh, unified uh, meta store maintenance uh, metadata maintenance you know there are multiple we already have a detailed notes on this unity catalog so you have to explain all Uh, when uh, when you get a chance of explaining uh, differences between high meta store versus unity catalog okay and uh, also we discussed the roles uh, of the unity catalog you know right account level account admin workspace admin meta store admin and then uh, schema admin or unity catalog admin no we we discussed the roles correct these are the roles that you have to remember and what is medallion architecture we we are aware medallion architecture is nothing but whatever we followed in our project uh, study or uh, before that okay like so silver or bronze silver gold you know uh, to uh, to have a uh, better processing the data we generally follow the medallion architecture uh, you can explain the same thing okay medallion architecture is nothing but a, a systematic processing of a data in a different layers okay so that is a bronze silver gold or raw intermediate curated okay as per convenience you can use the name right what is delta lake okay we clearly discussed what is delta lake before that delta table we discussed what is delta table and what are the features of delta table so by using this delta table features this delta lake uh, more powerful and then um, then what are the features of delta tables right so just now we discussed delta lake delta table we discussed and lake house architecture so finally i told you right the lake house architecture is a more powerful which currently is going on so lake house uh, will utilize all the benefits of data warehouse data lake and delta lake this three features it will uh, hold and make a powerful lake house architecture data warehouse versus data lake versus data lake house okay we already have a clear differences uh, in our previous sessions what is optimized in database and how how does it it do okay what does what does it do okay and explain the z order so z order also you know these and all you may not get individual questions you may get a questions something like what are performance optimized techniques that you followed in that case you may have to explain this optimize z order vacuum cache persist and then um, you know partition in bucketing and then broadcast join all these things you can explain what is auto loader okay we had a dedicated session what is delta live tables delta dlt dlt in databricks types of databricks clusters and their usages okay team 
So these are all possible questions. I thought these are very important. I think almost 65 to 66 questions that we are able to cover. All these questions you can able to answer once you go through all our sessions. Make sense? This is not only answers. You are now, once you complete one round of revision, you will be in a position uh, to explain any questions out of those sessions. Not only this, I picked up only few questions. Then you can also create few more questions out of the sessions. Got it? Yeah, yeah Naresh. Uh, so recently, this... I attended one interview as well. Most oh. of the questions were in between slide one, slide two, hmm. and slide three. I guess uh, one day revision I took and then I cleared all this. And I'm sure uh, if you guys go through this our material, definitely you are in a good shape. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm going through that multiple times. And every time I go through the video, I, I learn new things. New things, because right? Yes. Each, yes. each set, stand, sentence, each uh, word is very important because I previously I missed one word and then I was confused. Then hmm. again, I watched that video and then I realized, okay, I missed that word because of that, uh, the whole confusion.